All right, Alexander, let's uh, do a video on what's going on in Ukraine and uh, with Zelensky targeting opposition leaders for treason. It's an interesting story. And this comes on the heels of a new story, which you actually did a video on, which involved uh, Blinken and Victoria Cookies at Maidan Newland. Some people may call her Victoria F the EU Newland. Um, going to meet with Zelensky. And there's actually a lot of, there's been a lot of leaks about that meeting. And uh, it's really stunning, some of the leaks that have come out. And, and you may want to get into those leaks because it it paints the picture of a Blinken and a Newland, and I suspect more Newland than Blinken, going to meet with Zelensky and just basically demanding that Zelensky hand the keys of Ukraine over to American uh, oligarchs and American weapons dealers and business people. In other words, we're taking from your oligarchs in Ukraine, Mr. Zelensky, we're going to take from them and we're going to give all your riches that they own and we're going to give them to, to ourselves, our politicians and American business people and American oligarchs. I mean, a real plundering of the, of the country, but kind of like an oligarch to oligarch theft in a way. And uh, the reports are that this left Zelensky kind of, uh, you know, dumbfounded. You know, he was just kind of like blanked out as to what the hell's going on. And there was also reports that uh, they want Zelensky to, to shut down any inquiry to Hunter Biden. You may want to get into that as well. There's a lot of stuff going on in Ukraine that isn't being reported Absolutely. on. So so give us give us the full kind of uh, context as to what's going on here. This is an extraordinary visit, actually. I mean, when I did my, that program on my own channel, I only focused on one part of it because that was the only part that I knew about at that point, which is that they were basically telling Zelensky, don't even think about a war in the eastern Ukraine, which could involve Russia, because if you do, well, we're not there for you. You will lose and you're on your own. And don't even think about NATO. Don't even think about uh, um, anything like that for the time being. But... As at the same time as they were handing him all of that, the extraordinary thing is it was also, and, and this is becoming increasingly clear, a, a, a massive shakedown. Now I say that because what was already clear to me when I did that video is that they were harping on constantly about the need for Ukraine to carry out all kinds of reforms. Now, what I didn't appreciate was that on the one hand, it seemed to me those reforms were all about postponing forever the, uh, the date when Ukraine goes into NATO. But in reality, it wasn't just that. It was basically open the doors, open the gates to Ukraine so that, you know, yes, we're going to pull out of Ukraine eventually because that's, we've realised the, the political and diplomatic chess game there is essentially lost. But in the meantime, we want to make as much out of it as we possibly can and as quickly as we can. So open everything up, throw all your gates open, throw all your doors open, and we will come out and we will help ourselves to whatever we can. I, I, I mean, that was my interpretation of it all. I mean, it was pretty extraordinary, actually. It was, uh, and, and it's completely unsurprising that Zelensky, and not just Zelensky, I suspect, but probably the entire Ukrainian political class is in complete shock about this. But I suppose in a way it's unsurprising because when a venture like this one fails so abysmally as the venture that Newland and co hatched in Kiev in uh, back in 2014, well, I suppose it's not surprising that you know they're 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 trying to cover their costs and take out from it from it as much as they can get. Now uh, that seems to be the sort of free for all we're looking at at the moment. Now on, on the uh, on the hunter business, I, I'm going to be extremely careful. Um, it was briefly uh, uh, I I read an article in Time magazine. I want to stress Time magazine. That's that was the source which said quite clearly and, expl and expressly that those three television stations that were closed down by the Ukrainians, uh, um, by the Ukrainian government in February, were p publishing stories. In fact, they were publishing the information about Hunter and his connection to Burisma Holdings. That's what Time magazine says. You know, I'm not saying it. 
Time magazine said it. And I've no reason to doubt that it's true. And it shows the extraordinary lengths that just after the new administration came into office, Ukraine, or rather the government, was taking there to make sure that that story didn't circulate in Ukraine itself and via Ukraine to other places. So I stress again, that's Time magazine. I'm only reporting the fact that that's what Time magazine said. People are free to draw their own conclusions. I obviously have drawn mine. Now, on top of all of this, going forward, we see Zelensky now in a terrible mess. On the one hand, he has a situation where he's not really got, well, he knows he's not got US backing for a war in the Donbass. He's got all his troops on the contact line. They can't, ret they can't advance. If they retreat, he's humiliated and could face political obliteration. And he's got the US busy demanding, as, you, as we said, that he opened the gates to Ukraine so that people from the United States and elsewhere can go in and help themselves. So what does he do? Well, the only thing it seems that he can do is round up opposition Ukrainian leaders like Viktor Medvedchuk. Well, he hasn't actually caught him yet, but no doubt he's looking for him and put them on trial for treason. And it looks utterly desperate. It's also profoundly authoritarian. And I'm also waiting anxiously for all those people in the West who condemn, you know, the prosecution of Navalny uh, and all that to come along and say how outrageous it is that a Ukrainian opposition politician could be treated in this way. Well, I say that the irony in my voice, I'm sure, is obvious to everyone because we know that's not going to happen. But it, it is quite, quite bizarre. So uh, a, a war in limbo, a country that has been increasingly cut off and abandoned, a shakedown <laughs> and a treason prosecution all in one. Ukraine is going through some very interesting times. Yeah, what a mess. Ukraine is also falling apart. So let me read you from uh, the Saker blog, yeah. Alexander, because yeah. it has it's bullet pointed some of the the chatter and, yeah. and the leaks from uh, this meeting. And you can comment mm. on it and I'll just read you just simple mm. bullet points. I won't get into into too much detail mm. of these uh, bullet points. You can you can expand on them. So one of the it's uh, six, six points. The first one says that uh, Blinken and Newland want uh, all Ukrainian state corporations to be controlled by uh, foreign interests, i.e. US, U.S. business people, U.S. politicians um, sitting on the boards of these Ukrainian companies. That's one point. Another point says that, point number two says that Andriy Koboloyev, Koboliev, if I get that correct, Koboliev, and uh, who, who they say is, is closely aligned with the U.S., should be reinstated as the head of NAFTA gas. And uh, this is a problem because Zelensky does not, uh, did not like uh, Koboliev very much and he did a lot to get him out of NAFTA gas. Anyway, that's another point. They say that Blinken demanded a massive push against all the Ukrainian oligarchs. In other words, going back to your corruption point. Um, and he also expanded that to include land privatization, etc. And uh, he also talked about, they say Blinken talked about the war, of course, Russian troops in, uh, in Ukraine, that the U.S. might leave Ukraine to its own devices, and thus Russia would, would invade if Zelensky didn't carry through with these business structural changes. And uh, finally, we, we also have this demand, this shakedown, whereas Blinken and Newland want all of these Americans that are going to be involved in Ukraine now, in Ukraine business land privatization, etc. Ukraine gas, they want them to be untouchable from Ukrainian law, i.e. no prosecution can't touch them. And then going back to uh, the Hunter piece, where they want also some information as to who Giuliani was uh, dealing with in Ukraine as well. So a, a six point list of, uh, of demands in this shakedown. What do you make of, of everything I've, I've said? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what, it, I mean, it, it has a tremendous sense of deja vu for me because I remember American officials coming to Moscow in the last years of Gelsin's rule. And uh, of course, that was the Clinton administration, but some of the same people, no doubt, all coming along and making exactly the same demands of the Russians 
of Yeltsin's government at that time. And of course, it's all dressed up as, you know, reforms, anti-corruption steps, putting people you want in charge of energy assets. It's exactly what happened in Russia. So you put your own person in charge of NAFTA gas. Back in the 90s, it was putting people the United States wanted, you know, it, it wanted people like Khodorkovsky running the oil industry in Russia, those kind of people. And of course, getting Americans and people like that basically in control, running everything. And in the end, of course, in Russia, that provoked a massive reaction with what we know happened. We'll see what happens in Ukraine. But of course, it's difficult to imagine that Ukrainian oligarchs, who are powerful figures in Ukraine, are going to tolerate all of this. And these demands are so extreme that they're going to provoke a reaction in Ukraine itself. What, whether Blinken and Newland grasp that fact, I do wonder. But that, it seems to me, is the inevitable and unavoidable consequence of all of this. I mean, you can be sure that everybody um, of importance in Ukraine is now talking about this. And they're saying to each other, my God, what are we in for? The, Ukraine, the Americans are coming and they want to take everything over and they want to strip us bare. Uh, 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 and and uh, and then abandon us and walk away because that's how it's going to look to them i was going to say the exact same thing well it just it sounds to me like this is the final yeah. pillaging of the of the country the the final one absolutely before they just leave it to its absolutely. own devices they're just going to clean house absolutely. they're going to take which everything is Clean her. exactly which is which is essentially as i said i mean i remember this very well it was what was happening um as as the Yeltsin era sort of ground to its inevitable end. Very similar things were happening in Russia at that time. So, it's deja vu, if you will. Only I will say this, the, the Ukrainians have brought this on themselves to a great extent. I mean, it, they opened the door. <laughs> um, if they'd acted, if they defended their own country, well, they wouldn't be in this situation. But, of course, they didn't, and, they, and here we are. Yep. They let the snake into their, into their house. And, no, uh, exactly. They're exactly. going to pay a heavy price, a very heavy yes. price. Yes. All right. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Look for us, guys, on Odyssey, on Super U, and on Locals, where we're doing all kinds of really great exclusive content on those platforms, as well as BitChute as well. And go to the Durant shop, pick up some merch at 10% off when you use the code. Real news, you'll find those links down below in the description box, as well as a, as a pinned comment. Take care.